Thanks for checking out the Locked On NFL podcast on YouTube. It's been a crazy start to the offseason. It's only going to get crazier, and we're going to gear you up for the NFL draft as well. It's coming up in just about a month. Yeah, it's it's right there. Make sure you're subscribed. You've got alerts set up on your phone, so anytime we drop great content, you're aware of it. You can click it. You can watch it. You can view it. Of course, free and available on all podcasts. Bo Brock hanging out with you on a Monday edition so is Jeff Lloyd locked on Browns. The Browns making the big splash of the offseason. It was reported they were out on Deshaun Watson, and then they were very much in and acquired the services of the embattled quarterback. He's now in Cleveland. They still have Baker Mayfield on the roster as we record this. But Jeff, as we look at this deal, ultimately, was it the new contract that got the trade done for Deshaun Watson and his party to make him a Cleveland Brown? Well, and I was actually joking, you know, for all you Schiff's Creek fans, the Browns were told thrice by uh, Deshaun Watson's camp. They weren't interested. They were told Mm -hmm. that many times that they weren't interested. I'm assuming, uh, you know, obviously Jimmy Haslam is involved here. And look, if you're going to get to the point where you're talking 200 million guaranteed, you're definitely going to have to have your owner involved before you're giving up that kind of money. So, you know, I think it just came to that point where, you know, it was, hey, if we can get you a number that's guaranteed, is there an opportunity that you will not say no? And you look at it this way. I mean, look, the teams he was interested in seems like it was most close to home, New Orleans, the possibility of Atlanta going back to where he actually came from. But I think once $230 million guaranteed came out and David Mulligetta, obviously representing his client in Deshaun Watson, was obviously a number that they just simply could not turn down. When you break down the trade itself, and there is a precedent even this offseason of a veteran quarterback trade, Russell Wilson, he comes over for, what was it, five picks and a couple players. No players involved in this deal, but you know Nick Casario, the GM of the Houston Texans, was applauded for what he was able to get in return, but what's coming the way of Cleveland, when you get all the extra baggage and everything that's off the field, when you just look at Deshaun Watson, the NFL passing yardage leader from 2020, what he brings to the table, the Browns, they win this trade. Oh, there's no doubt the Browns won this trade. Um, the Browns were in a difficult situation. You know, everybody knows Baker Mayfield, you know, suffered this year and played the play was not what you were expecting. You know, you, there's no way around it. You, you can't sugarcoat it. So the Browns were in a tough position where they thought, Hey, we maybe have a higher end top t- top two tier quarterback when he's playing his best. Obviously this year, you're probably talking to, to a tier three, tier four. They felt they needed the guy. They wanted, you know, they wanted to be able to have a quarterback mentioned with the Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allens, and certainly all these other quarterbacks in the AFC. They seemed to be dead set that that is what they wanted. Granted, this situation comes with a lot of red tape. There's no way around it. Um, But you look at it on its face, the trade itself, you gave up three first round picks. Look, this year it is number 13 in the draft. If this goes the way it's supposed to, these next two picks will most likely be in the 20s. Nothing there. A couple of day, uh, no second round picks in this. You know, there was some nerves here for players like Greg Newsom, Jeremiah Wusukoromo. I had very promising rookie years. Would this be something Houston was going to be in? And for anybody who wants to say Houston got fleeced, even if they didn't win the trade, they were in a tough situation. They had not, there was nothing they could do. Um, they had to move on from them. So it got to a point where you were just going to take, you know, whatever you said, look, the parameters of the trade. So they got that. But the Browns, they won this trade easily. You know, it certainly comes with a lot of pause, a lot of hesitation. Um, You're worried about, you know, you know, worried about, you know, heat back from your fan base. Um, You certainly have a situation right now where you're not exactly sure how much time Deshaun Watson is going to be able to give you under center in the 2022 season. And I think you saw that when they went out and made another move yesterday for a quarterback in Jacoby Brissett. Um, The overall face of it, yes, they won the trade. Um, The parameters on how they view draft prospects um, will can offset the first round picks. Look, the Browns like them younger. They like them athletic. It's not necessarily about production and these type of things. It's about you know, being able to work with guys. They've had a great ability to add draft picks at any point. Um, maybe not recouping first round picks, um, but they can pick up these loose change picks in the next couple of years to you know pick up anything that they've lost. And going into this draft, they had nine picks. They now currently have seven, and they still have one, two, five picks in the top one seventeen. So for the Browns, that was for me the trade itself, and you know without getting into anything to Sean Watson personally, the trade itself was very well done. Now, under Steph, Kevin Stefanski, his first season, you know, the, probably the best 11-win third-place team we saw in a 16-game schedule. 
uh, very successful campaign in debut, and then they take a step back, and, and you can enter into any of the uh, variables that go into them taking that step back, quarterback play, injuries, whatever it may be. How did, I mean, their first season, very successful, maybe being a run first offense, relying on Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt on the backfield. How does this offense look now with those two studs in the backfield, but now enter Deshaun Watson, Amari Cooper, you've got David and Joku back at the tight end spot. What's this offense look like in 2022? Well, the biggest issue in even in 2020, as good as they were, they were not a threat vertically. Um, mm-hmm. And Baker Mayfield, to his credit, he had to play to the best of his abilities to make that happen. It didn't happen in 2021. And it was the same cast of characters. You know, Austin Hooper, Jarvis Landry. Why did it not really work with both of those guys the last two years? They are underneath players. They need players to challenge vertically to create space open underneath for these guys to excel. And you got to certain games where, hey, you want to know it? You're not challenging anybody vertically. So guess what? We are going after Nick Chubb. We are going after Kareem Hunt. We are bringing nine in the box. We're going to bring 10 in the box. We'll bring 11 within five yards of the line of scrimmage. We have no respect that you guys can beat us deep or that you will make the passes. Green Bay, you saw it. They tried to challenge vertically. You ended up with a four interception day from Baker Mayfield. Amari Cooper, Amari Cooper is one of the best at getting separation at the position. Whatever anybody thinks about him, he can create, and he is a fantastic route runner. Does he excel deep? Not so much, but Donovan Peoples-Jones has been a promising player as a former sixth-round pick through two years. The production went up year two, um, and he was put in a position where basically he was handed the Browns wide receiver one position over the summer. Odell was here. Jarvis was here. And as the year worked on, he was kind of like the primary guy, although the Browns were not comfortable with it. Anthony Schwartz obviously has great jets. Jakeem Grant, they brought in here. He's going to be able to do some fun stuff for them. But again, an extremely fast player. The ability to hopefully be able to open up things down the field for the Browns should make everyone's life easier. 2020, you got away with it. 2020, every, 2021, everybody else called their bluff. Yeah. Hey, I, I, this is why I love the Lockdown Podcast Network. You get a 360-degree look at, at each and every single NFL franchise and across sports. Uh, Jeff T, Jeff underscore LJ underscore Lloyd on Twitter. You mentioned it. I thought it was important as far as this trade went down. The importance of Baker Mayfield, you know, be that what what it may be, how he performed last season. He, he led the uh, NFL in picks at one point during his tenure, but he certainly jump started this organization coming off probably its most trying times in its since its inception. See, and that's where the part maybe for me, it might be my, my story might be different for some, from some other people, okay. um, you know, covering the team in 2017, you know, that's what I took over was the fall of 2017 yeah. covering this podcast. You know how it starts, Bo. In the beginning, you're a guy with a podcast and not many <laughs> listeners. Right. Um, but, you know, it was all leading up towards who would be the quarterback drafted number one in 2018 for the Browns, Baker Mayfield. Then you get to that week three Thursday night game. He takes the field. You know, they win the game. You know, they look good. They look competitive. They're not the league's joke anymore. And then, of course, you know, the pressure and, you know, ex- expectations being put on the franchise happened. 2019, absolute wash. But mm-hmm. then you get to that 2020 year. And, you know, for me, and for me, it, it seems really difficult how bad he is being raked right now. Look, he was injured. We don't know what to degree that affected his play. There's really no barometer or way to even know. We'll find out when he goes, takes the field again for somebody else healthy, you know, was it holding him back or did he get into a part where, you know, and Baker, very emotional guy, very strong willed. There's a possibility there where Baker Mayfield could get in his own head and cause himself his own problems. I think a lot of people believe that was the case, but I think a lot of it was poor play maybe led to Baker Mayfield getting into his head. So for me, you know, here was something, you know, basically when I started, look, we've always gotten paid when we started. It was more of a hobby though. Yeah, there was some money involved, but I mean, it was, you know, we weren't making much money, but this show grew exponentially. We grew this following, this network grew. So for me, a lot of it was due and people, oh, well, other players, da, 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 da. You ain't going to run a podcast on the DN. You ain't going to run a podcast on the running back. People want to usually know about your quarterback. Um, It's difficult that it's been this way and he's been treated this way. And if Deshaun Watson doesn't take the $230 million guaranteed, I don't know where the Browns were headed. Um, mm-hmm. Were they going to cross their fingers for Jimmy Garoppolo, similar type player, for $10 million more? Um, you know, with pick 13, were they going to gamble on one of these rookie quarterbacks? I, I don't think so. 
Um, so it's really tough. I mean, it, it's tough to see it the way it went down. But, you know, if you're going to tell me, did they go out and get a much better quarterback? Yes, 100%. Um, yes, keeping in mind football only, did they go out and get a much better quarterback? They did. Deshaun Watson. There, there's no way around it. Um, everything you like about him, the ability that he can create for himself when something is not there. Um, you, you, you'll, you love the fact that he's got the running ability if he needs it. Um, the fact that there's going to be some really easy throws for him that he may not be accustomed to because this offense will create him for him that he will make and just be like, wow, well, that was cake. Um, mm -hmm. So all of that you, you're looking forward to. But you know, to, to move on from Baker Mayfield, and, and it's, it's been a really, really bad turn the way it's all gone down. And look, everybody's wrong here. Look, the Browns have moved on essentially from Baker Mayfield, Odell Beckham Jr., Austin Hooper, and Jarvis Landry. So yeah. everybody seems to be wanting to point the finger at one person where the Cleveland Browns basically said, you know what? We are done with all of you. You know, basically yeah. like a teacher or a parent, nobody's right. So everybody go to your room. And that's kind of essentially what the Browns have done here. There's a chance Jarvis Landry comes in the back door of all the four. He's the probably only one that probably deserves the right to still be here. Um, but it's, it, it's just been, you know, as much as, you know, fans want to get excited for their new quarterback as far as football wise, it's, it seems to be a rough ending for a guy who did a lot for this franchise, and it seems like that's being underestimated at this point in time. Jeff Floyd, make sure you're listening to Locked On Browns. There's some really fascinating storylines surrounding this team after they made the big move on Friday for Deshaun Watson, now the QB1 for Cleveland. Jeff, thanks, man. No problem at all, Bob.